actually. This is, these are the soul winning numbers. So I, I line it up with the financial years just so it's easier. Um, you know, we're all used to financial years. So quarter three is January to, to March. I used to do it like three months from the start of church, but I was getting confused because then, you know, when you do, when I do the taxes and everything like that, it just works the same. So I just made the soul winning numbers the same. So these are the numbers for quarter three financial year 16, right? So that ends in June. And what I do here, if you didn't know, I'll just go through quickly the different statuses so that when we go soul winning, you know what status to put because I think I haven't gone through them in a while and when you go soul winning, sometimes these statuses mean different things to different people. And not that it's really important, but then just when we reflect on the numbers, we know exactly what those numbers represent and you know, we can get an idea of what they mean. So not home is, is, is obviously, you know, I don't have to explain that one. Now not interested as, as well. If they don't, if they don't accept the, the track that you give them and they don't want to talk at all, that's not interested. So generally if somebody is interested to talk to you, like they'll, they'll usually receive a track as well. So that's sort of the defining factor between those two. If they're not willing to even receive the, the pamphlet, they're not interested. Now, where the confusion normally lies is the difference between gave a tract and brief discussion. So the way I've defined it as sometimes, you know, sometimes people will just take a tract off you, but they, but they don't let you get a word in, right? They just give you a tract, they close the door, they say, oh, fine, I'll take it, but you can't say anything to them. That's what we define as gave a tract, meaning you handed them the leaflet, but didn't get to say anything. Now, a brief discussion encompasses you gave them the tract, you've got to say something short, or you got to explain a few things, but you never really got to go through scriptures with them. Right? So that's what a brief discussion is. So a brief discussion is you've given them the tract, you've maybe given them like a short 20-second 20, 20 synopsis of the gospel, or you've been able to just say one verse and just say, oh, you share this one verse with you and just explain it briefly. But you haven't gone through an in-depth like, hey, you know, I'm going to a couple of verses, we're explaining a few things, we're going back and forth. That's brief discussion. So the reason why we, gave, we made those two statuses is because we didn't know whether the people we were giving a track to, like, hey, we could get a percentage of how many people are actually receptive and willing to stop and listen and how many people just took it. But, you know, we're almost like a not interested, but they took a, they took a track, you know? So that's gave a track, brief discussion is get to say a couple of things, maybe share one verse, but don't get to say much more than that. Now, heard the gospel in-depth discussion, that's when you get to go through verses with them, right? And you may either try and give the gospel to them or you're, you're explaining a lot of other things and you have actual lengthy discussion with that person where you're talking about different verses going back and forth. That's what that yellow is. So you're actually having a decent conversation with that person, not just you've said a few things and they just gave you a little bit of time and then, then you couldn't talk to them anymore. So they've actually stopped to talk to you for a while. That's heard the gospel in-depth discussion. The rest are kind of self-explanatory, but you've got following up, not saved. Now, this is meant to be the following up statuses, so the light green one and the orange one. These are meant to be temporary statuses. So if you mark somebody as following up, not saved, it's not saying I want somebody else to follow up with that person and you just mark it as orange and hopefully somebody goes back to them. No, following up, not saved is a reminder for you that if you need to follow up with them or you're going to go back next week or you're going to get in contact with them, you can mark them as orange to remind you, hey, I need to follow up with that person. If you're not going to follow up with that person, then put them as a yellow, that they've heard the gospel, that you had an in-depth discussion with them, all right? So I don't want, like on our map, just have all these oranges and then nobody's following up on them. If they're not, go back and change your pin to yellow if you're not following up on the people that you wanted to follow up on. Because I always feel it's so much more effective if the person that actually talked to them followed up on them. You know what I mean? Just think about yourself. Like, think about like, if somebody came to your door, you spoke to them, and then the bishop of the church just randomly came to you. Like, you don't really have that relationship with that person. Like, you've spoken to them at the door. You've built that relationship with them. It'll be a lot more effective if you talk to them, you know, and you follow up with them um, than, than if I just call them out of the blue. And, and same with me. Like, to me, I'm a bit, I'll be a bit threatening to them because, you know, I'm like the authority in the church. They think, oh, the bishop of the church. They won't be so open with me, but they know you. They've talked to you. So... I definitely think the person that spoke to them will be the most effective at following up with them. Otherwise, just put them back as yellow if you don't get an opportunity. Uh, red is saved. So saved, 
is some, so the, the line that we've defined there, because I believe that somebody has to pray, you know, call upon the Lord to be saved. But obviously I acknowledge that people that don't call upon the Lord with you can be saved. But the line that we've drawn for the statuses are, like, are only if they pray with you. So sometimes we'll have people that say that they'll pray later, but we just mark them as yellow anyway, right? Because we don't know for sure. But if they've prayed with us, and we have a better idea, then we'll mark them as red. Now we created the dark red status because when you go soul winning, you run into people that are already saved. So we were marking them as saved, but then we couldn't differentiate how many people we got saved and how many people were already saved. So that's why we created that dark red pin, already saved, so we can see uh, through our efforts, God has allowed us to get 14 people saved, but out soul winning, we met 19 people that were already saved. You see, so rather than it saying that there was 33 people getting saved, you know, we'd, we'd sort of get an overinflated number of how many people that actually responded to our work when we were going out there soul winning. So that's already saved. And then follow up is if you want to meet up with them again, but they are either saved or already saved. Oh, sorry, that, that you got saved. And then you got follow up already saved. If they're already saved, then you want to follow up on them. And then Brown is a church member. And then we added these last ones. Um, just to help us clear off the map so people weren't wondering, oh, did somebody knock that place or not? Because sometimes you'll knock and there's like a house and then a couple of businesses, then a house. So we added the pin commercial to know that you didn't just miss those houses. So mark them as commercial if it's a business so we know that there's not gaps in the map and that whole street has been, has been knocked. And then language barrier we put there because sometimes the person would have spoken to you, but they just didn't understand you. So we didn't want to mark that person as not interested because if somebody like did speak the language, they might have talked longer. So we put that person as a language barrier so we don't mark them as not interested. You know? And then the aggressive is the last one where people like they tell you to F off or they tell you to get lost or whatever. You know, Don't come back, that sort of thing. If somebody slams the door saying don't come back, mark them as aggressive because we don't want to come back and then they're, they're upset. You know, We might wait a bit longer until we knock the whole area again. So, we can take some care there with people that will get upset if we actually come back. So other things I keep here, so you can see obviously the different numbers. So Q3, FY16, that's the last three months. So that was uh, January, February, March. Q2 was October, uh, November, December. And you, I put a breakdown of percentages, but I actually also show this, the change from the two quarters. So we can see if quarter three, we did more than quarter two. So where it's green, we did more, but where it's red, we did less. And what's interesting is we knocked more doors, but we, we had less, um, well, more, people pre more people hear the gospel, but we had less people getting saved. So, you know, because you can't really control that number. But, what, but that's, well, that's interesting because I, I guess we knocked so many more doors because I think because um, even where Tatenda lives, there's maybe all those apartments, right, where we're buzzing down, which is probably why the not homes are so high. Um, and and um, the last column shows all the numbers since we started the church, 1st of March 2015. So you can see there that we've knocked on 22,000 doors and 10,000 of those have been not home. So it's always about just less than half of the people are not home. Um, underneath that, you see the average soul winners per week. So that's not the number of different people. That's just the number of instances of people. So, you know, if somebody goes twice a week, I just count that as two because they'll be counted on the Wednesday and the Sunday, for example. And that's just the average amount of times each week people go. And then I've just divided the number of doors by the number of people. So just to give you an idea. So from the beginning of our church, on average each week, about 11 people go each week, 11 to 12. And those 11, um, you know, you knock about almost, you've knocked about 2,000 doors each on average. The other interesting things, yeah, I'd put the key stats at the bottom. So obviously the number of doors. Now just, just think about this, you know, we have an average of 12 people going and that's some people going multiple times a week. So in our church, we're averaging about 40 to 50 people. If you don't include children, you know, maybe that's like 30 people. So it's still a very small percentage. I mean, bigger than most churches, thank God, but it's still a very small percentage of people actually being involved in the soul winning. So 11 people on average a year, maybe less than that. So let's say eight people on average a year have knocked 22,000 doors. Just imagine if that was twice that number. If 20 people on average went soul winning, we would have been able to look back and knocked 40,000 doors. So 
a little, a few people just committed, like we talked about in the sermon, you know, just consistent, working hard, can get a huge thing done for the Lord. Where, you know, we've seen 134 people call upon the name of the Lord. We have preached the gospel to 1,100 people. And if you actually look at the map or the area that we've knocked, it's not even that much. Like, I think we've knocked like maybe six suburbs. So six suburbs, but we could be doing it like further out, knocking even more areas, knocking areas even, you know, you don't want to travel all the way over here, you can knock your area. Um, but, you know, it's been two years now, maybe in another year or two, we might, you know, do a bit more area and then we could knock it again. But we could do so much more, so much more frequently if more of us were involved and doing it more consistently. I know it's great that, you know, and that's why, like I talked about in the sermon, you know, it's not about being down on you, it's provoking you onto love good works, giving you time to grow as well. So I understand, hey, it's great that people are starting to get involved, starting to go along, you know, maybe once a month, and once every now and then, but we want to definitely grow in our fruitfulness and become more and more consistent. So look here, total doors knocked, 22,155. So the last, last quarter we knocked almost 3,000, or 2,800. 20, Total doors answered, 51%. So you see here, that's just how many people are not, minus how many people are not home. What I like to point out though, is total at least heard the gospel, excluding those that were not home or it was a business. And that's 134 out of the 2,800. So 14%. So what's that? That's about one in eight, right? One in seven. So if you think about it, of all the doors you knock, from our stats, obviously this is historical data and it doesn't, take into account whatever happens in, in the future, can't control it. But it's interesting that it, it's quite consistent over the last two years that of all the doors we've knocked, of all the people that are home, one in eight, one in seven, will talk to you. Either you will be able to preach the gospel to them or you'll uh, get them saved. Um, or they're already saved, you know, you'll have, have a chat with them. But see here, total saved, so we've got 19. So that's at 2%. So that's two out of every 100 doors of people that are home, you know, will end up getting saved. So that's, that's a pretty cool number. And it's, it's been pretty much the same even from the beginning. Um, we see, uh, oh no, because I guess from, from the beginning, it's, it's a smaller number, isn't it? It's only 0.6%. Uh, so I, I guess it goes up and down each, um, each quarter. Oh, maybe I'm not... Uh, counting it all correctly because yeah because you've got to count uh, not just the saved but also the follow-up saved and things like that so two percent two out of every hundred people that answered the door got saved in that last quarter so hey sometimes it's just a matter of time and i was even telling to tender this yesterday like we were able to preach the gospel to somebody they weren't ready to get saved then but getting people saved is just it's just a numbers game the more you go soul winning the more people you're gonna preach the gospel to, and eventually there's gonna be people that are ready to get saved. And that, that's how it is. And that's why soul winning is not difficult. You know, I always tell people, soul winning, it's, there's nothing hard about soul winning. Obviously, when you first start going soul winning and you're learning about how to preach the gospel, you're learning some of the simpler objections and things like that. But what you'll realize when you go soul winning long enough and you hear people give the gospel again and again and again and again is you're realizing they're saying the same thing again and again and again and again. It's not really, it doesn't really change that much. Yeah, you'll get the odd person that has a really deep conversation and takes you on all these different things and that's a bit more of a, a vivid conversation. But most people, you're just explaining the gospel. You're just explaining why it's not by works and it's by faith and it's the same arguments again and again and again and again. And what gets difficult about soul winning is just, a, just going. For those of us who know, the reason why soul winning is difficult because it's just hard to be consistent and keep going because it requires faith to know that there is value in preaching the gospel to people and hopefully getting people saved in the process. And I always like include that last stat of how many people are aggressive because a lot of people are scared thinking that oh, I'm going to go soul winning. People are just going to be so angry. They're going to be swearing at me and whatnot. But look, in the last quarter, out of all of us that went soul winning, we knocked three, almost 2,800 doors. There were two people that we marked as actually being aggressive. So you may not have even come across those people. You know, that might have been, you know, Michael might have got them both. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's nothing to be scared of. You know, they're not interested people. They just don't want to talk to you. Just move on. You know, obviously that's not always encouraging, but it's not scary either. You know, but the, it's the aggressive ones that are rude and maybe mouth off at you. But there's so few. I mean, out of the 22,000 doors we've knocked, we've marked 52 houses 
as aggressive. So not a high number at all. So definitely encourage you to, to get involved in that. Uh, here are the two charts I like to show you. So this is um, from the start of financial year 2016, the trend. So it is good that it's still slightly going up, but it's definitely, I think it was flatter than last quarter. So we want to keep that number going up. So the blue line is church attendance. The red line is the number of soul winners. So you can see how that's trending. And you can always see that church attendance is always very inconsistent, you know, going up and going down. You see how it sort of spikes at the end there. And then it just dips down. Because that was like everybody coming for our church anniversary. And then the two weeks after, there was like nobody here. I don't know why. And I think that happened last year as well. Like we have a really big church anniversary day. And then the next two weeks, like everyone's gone. It's like, it's like, it's like they've had enough church for three weeks. Because, oh man, that anniversary, that was just so much church. I don't need church for like another three weeks. So um, it always dips at the end there. So let's not do that. that this is um, since the beginning of church. So thank God church is growing. You know, we're averaging like 20, 30 in the first year, then 30, 40, and now we're sitting between 40 and 50. So hopefully every year the church keeps growing, but soul winning numbers are still staying straight because, you know, sometimes there are spikes. You, you see how you can see there, like in the 1st of April 2016, you see how it spikes and then it goes down and then it spikes and then it goes down again. You know why that is? Because people get excited about soul winning, right? They're like, oh, I'm going to get soul winning. They go a couple of weeks, they're excited. And then they're not seeing any fruit, and then the, they die off, right? And, and, then, and then another group joins church, and they're going solid, and then they want to get involved, and then it dies off. So consistency, that's why this sermon about fruit was so important, because it requires work and it requires consistency. If, you, if those people were just consistent, they would start seeing people say, they would be learning more, they would know, they would have more experience, and they could look back at this year, maybe they would have got somebody saved by now. You know, so um, that's why the soul winning numbers are like that, because soul winning is hard work. You know, and it, and it requires faith, it requires consistency. Um, and that's why you see those spikes. 